Hey everyone, today we're going to jump back into 1 John 4 and we're going to start at 16b because A is just irrelevant today. Um, God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Love for God and fear of his judgment can't coexist. I used to fear the return of Jesus Christ. And I think there's many Christians who today fear the return of Jesus. We, we're afraid of hell and we're afraid of punishment. Um, it, it's not like we're looking forward to his return. Uh, we're more afraid of what might happen. And even though when you look in Revelation, it seems like some scary things will happen, it still doesn't it doesn't compare to the looking forward to his return. I remember when I was a teenager and I had walked away from God and I still believed in him. And honestly, for some strange reason, I, I knew I would serve him later. Um, but I would just like sit in the back of the car and look up at, at the moon and just think, man, what if it just went blood red and like Jesus came back right now? And it was a terrifying thought. And I think so many Christians are terrified of the return of Jesus. We're terrified of hell. We just have this uneasiness and that's not the love that God wants us to have for him. That's not love made perfect. And it's actually a good judge of where we are in our relationship with him if we're just led by fear and we read our Bibles because we're afraid of him and we try to serve him because we're afraid of him. That's not perfect love and that's not what he desires. I know my wife, um, when she comes home, like it makes her day if, if the dishes are done. And so um, I don't like doing the dishes. I mean, who likes doing work? But, but I'll do them and my thought process is like, I love her and I want her to know that I love her. And when I do this, she knows that I'm thinking about her. She knows that I've, I've thought of her because she knows that I would never do this on my own, right? And that is because I love her. It's perfect love. But if I'm doing the dishes because I'm like, man, she's going to come home and she's going to be in a bad mood. And like, I'm afraid of what she'll be like and I don't want to deal with that. And so I'll do the dishes. That's not love. That's, it's kind of selfish because I just don't want to deal with the bad attitude she might have because I haven't done this thing. And I think that's how we treat God. We, we, we do things for him because like, I, don't, I don't even want to deal with him. I don't, I don't want to experience that punishment. But that's not what he wants. That's not the type of relationship he wants with us. He wants to have this relationship that's close so that we can understand his perfect love for us and that our love for him will develop into a perfect love where we're, we don't fear punishment or we don't fear hell or we don't fear his return. We look forward to it because we just want to be with him. And, and we, we read our Bibles and we pray and we, and we try to do good things and do what it says in his word because we want to please him because we love him. That's the relationship he wants. That's the relationship that Jesus bought that we don't have to be guided by our fears of punishment because we're already saved from punishment because we have repentance and we have the blood of Christ to wash over us and we are free to live in this perfect love where it's just like, God, you are so good to me. I just want to live and, and do what you want me to do so that I am pleasing in your sight. That is perfect love.